Hello! Welcome to The Smart Student. My name is Chelsea Seaburn. Today's video is going to be a demonstration of how to create this table right here, starting from scratch using Google Docs. If you'd like to watch the full video that has everything you need to know about tables and figures under APA 7th edition, be sure to check out this video right here, which will be linked down in the description below. But we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's what the end result of the table will look like. Now, when you're creating your own table, it does not have to have all the columns and rows that this table has. I've chosen this one for the demonstration because it's gonna force me to cover the majority of the variations that you can use when creating a table. No matter what type of table you're creating, all tables are made up of five different components. As you can see here, you have a table number, table title, the body portion, headings, and any necessary notes. Now, while notes are one of the five components, something to note is that not every table needs notes. They are only to be used when an element inside the table is not easily understood on its own. The other four out of the five components, however, stood on its own. The necessary when creating a table. So when you're creating your table, the first thing you need to decide is where you're going to place it within your paper. For student papers where placement is not specified, you have two options. You can either embed it within the text like this, or you can place it at the end of your reference page like this. For this demonstration, I'm going to create the table after the reference list. If you are creating this table fresh without already writing your paper, you would first set up the general formatting. Your font should be legible and large enough for your reader to easily read it. I personally like to keep things consistent, so I suggest using the same font as your paper. I'm a big fan of Times New Roman size 12 because everyone's familiar with it, so we'll go ahead and use that to create this table. We'll worry about changing the formatting and the spacing later. Since I'm creating this table after already written the paper, and I'm going to insert it after the reference list, the first thing I would do in this case is insert a page break after the reference list. Next, you'll type out the first component, which is the table number, which should be in bold text and flush left. After that, you will hit enter one time and type out the title of the table on the next line. The title should be typed out in capital case using italic font like this. Now, let's go ahead and insert the table into our Google Docs using the table function. I'd like to note how I haven't hit enter after typing the title. The reason being is that when you insert a table, it will automatically insert it on the next line. So from here, I would go up to the toolbar, select insert, select table. From here, you'll want to select the amount of rows and columns your table has. For this example, that's 12 rows in six columns. As you can see here, we now have a rough table in our document. Now we're going to add in all the data first, and then we'll worry about formatting it last. In this example, the first row is made up of what are called column spanners. This is because these three columns span more than just one column. To insert the data, I'm going to highlight the two columns, right click, select merge, and then type in my column heading. I'll repeat this for the next two columns. This column in the left corner is called a stub column. All columns that are flush left are called stub columns. On the next row, I'll add in the headings for the next line of columns. I suggest using the tab key to easily navigate between the cells. I'll go ahead and merge these two cells together since they are blank. Next, I will add in this heading, which is called a table spanner because it spans the entire length of the table. To do this, I will highlight all the cells in this row, merge them, and then type in my heading like this. Let's go ahead and finish up the headings before we add in the data to this table. Here are the rest of the stub headings. All of them in this table span two columns. I wanted to show you that you can merge the cells after you've typed the data in. Either way works just fine. Since the four stub headings below these four are identical, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste them for easy formatting. Great! Let's finish up our last heading, which is a table spanner for the second half. Again, I'm going to merge all the cells together and type in my title. Remember, we'll fix all the table formatting once we're finished inputting all the data. Awesome! Next, I'm going to add in all the data to this table. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this portion of the video while I do this. I'll be back in a sec. 
All right, here we are. We've officially inputted all the data. Now is the time to format the table. I might be weird, but I like this part. The first thing we're going to do is center all of the text in the table. So go ahead and highlight everything inside the border. Go up to the toolbar and select the centering key. When it comes to the line spacing, under APA 7th edition, your table can be one of three options. Either single spaced, 1.5, or double spaced like this. This will honestly depend on the size and the look of your table. Since this table has quite a few rows, I'm gonna go with single spacing because the other two options would make it too long. All right, that looks nice. Now we need to go through and remove the borders around the cells. There are a few ways you can do this, but I think the easiest is to remove all the borders first and then add back in the borders you'd like to keep. You wanna limit your use of borders to only those that are needed for clarity. In general, you should use a border at the top and the bottom of the table, beneath column headings, and above column spanners. You can also use them to signify important elements such as totals or summaries like this. Do not use vertical borders to separate data. Do not use borders around every cell in the table. Do not use any shading or any type of coloring in the table. Lastly, do not use any bold or italic fonts within the table to emphasize cells. So with all of that in mind, what I'm going to do is remove all of the borders. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to highlight the entire table, right click, select table properties, and then from here, I'm going to change the table border to zero. Great. Now let's add in all the borders that are necessary, starting with the top and bottom borders of the table. Sometimes the lines can be hard to find, but what you want to do is hover your mouse over the area until you see the icon change like this. You can either change your borders one at a time by clicking on the single line and selecting the line sizing button from the toolbar and then changing it back from zero up to one. To make this easier, you can change the borders in groups by holding down the shift key as you select multiple lines. Once you have a full row selected, you can then change the line sizing to add the border back in. I'm going to speed this up again and go ahead and just finish this part. And voila, look at that beautiful looking table if I do say so myself. The final step is adding in any necessary notes. Like I said at the beginning of this video, not all tables need notes. They're only to be used when something within the table needs further clarifying. When it comes to notes, there are three levels. You have general notes, specific, and probability notes. No matter what type of note you're using, they should all be placed directly underneath the table with one double spaced line separating the table and the first note. General notes are your first level of notes and the purpose of them is to explain or provide information relating to your table as a whole. So this includes explaining any abbreviations, symbols, or data that's not easily understood on its own. The general note is also where you would include any acknowledgments that a table is reprinted from another source. In other words, this is where you would include your citation. I'll cover how to cite your table after we finish the notes section. But the way you'd format a general note is by typing the word note in italic fonts followed by a period. The note itself would follow after. Moving on to a specific note, which refers to a particular column, row, or cell. The way you'd format a specific note is by indicating it with a superscript lowercase letter. A superscript is simply a small letter included above the line like you see it is here. In order to type a superscript letter, on a Mac you would select command plus a period together and then type out the letter. To bring your cursor back to normal, you'd simply hit command period once again. If you have a second specific note, it would follow in the same paragraph with the preceding superscript letter, indicating that it's a second note like this. Now, you'll want to make sure to include the superscript letter in the cell that indicates the row or column the specific note is referring to. For example, it would look something like this. The final type of note is a probability note. Probability notes are used to provide the reader with the results of a test for statistical significance. They are indicated by a superscript asterisk just like this. Probability notes follow the same guidelines as a specific note, meaning that any subsequent note should be included in the same paragraph and you'll want to make sure to include the asterisk in the cell that the note refers to. 
All right guys, we're in good shape. The table looks great. The last point I want to make in this video is how to properly cite a table if you're using it from another source. So when you reprint or adapt a table from another source, that source should be acknowledged, aka cited, in your in-text citation, in your reference list, and through a copyright note which should be included in a general note directly underneath the table. To do this, you would first follow the same formatting of creating a reference list entry and its corresponding in-text citation under APA formatting. Next, to create the copyright note, you would either start by typing from, if you're reproducing the table verbatim from another source, or you would type adapted from if you're adapting the table in some way to fit your own purposes. For example, let's say you were only using part of the table that would be considered adapting it, in which case you would write adapted from. After you type either from or adapted from, you would then type the information about the source, which should include the title, the author, the year, the publisher, and the source location in that order. If you'll notice, these are the same elements found in your reference list entry. The only difference here is that the title should be listed first to easily state where the title is from. The last portion of the note is the copyright information, which should include the copyright year, followed by the copyright holder, like you see it is here. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial action-packed and super helpful. Again, if you wanna watch the other video about everything you need to know between tables and figures under APA 7th edition, please be sure to check out this video up here. It's linked down in the description.